Okay, there's me. Hello, and welcome to Shelf Analysis Episode 2. Um, last night seemed to go okay. Thank you to everybody for being so lovely. And we had a couple of tiny little technical bits and pieces that I think we may have ironed out um, this evening. For those of you who didn't notice any of the technical problems last night, everything went fine. It was really good. Um, I'm Rick O'Shea. You know that because you are already in my book club. And every night for the duration of The Thing, let's not talk about The Thing, we are going to be uh, having a chat show here live in the Ricochet Book Club every night, uh, weeknights from eight o'clock. Last night, episode one, you'll be able to find it in the announcements section was with Dave Rudden last night. We chatted with Dave from his house uh, last night uh, at eight o'clock. You can go and find that episode here. I've got a great guest for you tonight. I just, I'm already anticipating there will be squeals happening in households around the country. No pressure to our guest tonight, who's a huge favorite of uh, people in the Ricochet Book Club. Um, Okay, developments from uh, today. I don't know about you, I'm not getting as much reading done as I would like to be. I would very much like to be doing some reading and I've got stuff I need to be reading for right now. I'm um, one of the judging chairs for the Dawkey Literary Prize this year. And I'm, are you having concentration issues? I'm kind of having that. Now maybe some of it is to do with the fact that the radio show is still happening every day and we've got tons of stuff happening on, on RTE Gold. I'll tell you about that later. Uh, maybe some of it has to do with this, which is taking up uh, you know, it takes a fair amount of your time when you're prepping, putting together, staging. Um, uh, although I have my wonderful other half, Liz, who's actually doing all, all this stuff you see around here. None of this actually belongs in our house. We've stolen it and we put it behind us just to make us look pretty good. We're putting together a chat show every night. But it's the fun to be had in it. Okay, I forgot to do this last night and I'm going to do it now really briefly before our guest comes on. And um, if you have any questions, by the way, you can stick them in the chat below. Uh, either for myself or for our author who's coming on later. If you have any technical problems, we can't hear you right now, and chances are it's your broadband. Now, um, this I'm going to recommend, there were a couple of books I wanted to recommend uh, yesterday, really briefly. This one I'm going to, if you haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet, it is called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. It's by Charlie Maxey. Now, you might say to yourself, why? This looks like, and it does, the illustrations look very much like the E.H. Shepherd's illustrations of um, Winnie the Pooh stories. This is a book that right now is the book the human race needs. It is a book of warmth, it is a book of beauty, it is a book about friendship between a boy, a mole, a fox, and a horse. I'm not gonna read the book for you, but I thought I'd give you just a little idea of what the illustrations look like here. So take, I'm hoping that works, there you go, that. Very beautiful. And it also, it's going to make you laugh. Do you have a favorite saying, asked the boy? Yes, said the mole. What is it? If at first you don't succeed, have some cake. I see, does it work? Every time which is then followed with, I got you a delicious cake, said the mole. Did you? Yes. Where is it? I ate it, said the mole. Oh, but I got you another. Did you? Where's that one? Same thing seems to have happened. That is an extraordinary piece of work. It is not just for kids, it is for adults as well. And I'm gonna be talking about that and a bunch of other things on the Sean O'Rourke show tomorrow uh, on RTE Radio 1, along with Louisa from Raven Books. We are giving you books that will help your mental health and maybe potentially inspire you in the situation that we are all in. That's tomorrow morning with Sean O'Rourke Show on RTE Radio 1. Briefly as well, thank you to Christy Culhoun. Christy lives in Ballymena in County Antrim. I did an uh, event with Martin Parr, the world famous photographer in the Seamus Heaney home place a couple of weeks ago. This probably looks like it's going to be the only event I'm going to do for the first half of uh, 2020, which is fair enough. We got talking. Martin Parr, amongst other things, has put out uh, a few books of what are called boring postcards. They're genuinely boring postcards. One of them is the UK, one of them is the United States, one of them is Germany. In each of these books, they're postcards for places that used to put out their own postcards. So service stations, um, roundabouts used to have their own postcards in the UK, and he's created these art books that are full of them. I was missing the German one. I met Christy. He's a lovely man. We got talking after the event, and he said, and sorry, Christy, I'm not going to do your accent any favors here. You know, I have the German one as well. I've never seen the German one. I've been looking for the German one for years. And he said, I'm a spare copy. I'll send it to you. This came into the post in RTE today. This is Langweiliger Postkarten. I'll give you an example of what you find in it. For instance, um, this is the Hauptstadt der DDR in Cox, Karl Marx Alle. I'm still getting used to showing things to cameras. They are the dullest things imaginable. They're, this is a postcard from a building. 
I find these things utterly fascinating. Christy, I'm going to send you something in return. He sent me his return address as asked. Thank you very much, Christy. Cheers. Fair play. Uh, one of our continuing uh, items on the show is uh, what is Karina reading? Obviously, the big star of the show is not me. It is Karina the houseplant. Um, where's the thing? I pressed the button here. I can bring up Karina. Where's Karina? Karina is somewhere else in my house. Uh, this is my house here. Karina. There is Karina. Karina is in next door in the kitchen. Hi, Karina. Uh, Karina, from the first couple of episodes, has you don't need to shake so much. It's fine. It makes it, it makes it look like you're trying to be a star. Stop it. She's reading If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. Um, she said, and she sent me some notes, obviously. She's a houseplant. She can't speak. Uh, I personally don't like cats. So I was intrigued by the idea of this book. It turns out it's more than about just cats. It's the story of a man who learns he's about to meet the big plant in the sky and starts making deals with the devil to gain one more day of life. I like it, but it needs less cat. Thank you, Karina. We'll talk to you tomorrow night on the show, Karina. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye. Karina's gone. Okay, we're done. Now, uh, every night on the show, we will have a guest for you. Now, Karina's gone. I've turned you off. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm still presenting and directing this show at the same time. Uh, Karina is gone, our guest on the show tonight. Every night I'm going to do this. We're not going to tell you who the person is in advance. I used to love it back in the old days in the Late Late Show where you would switch on at half five on a Friday or Saturday night back in the day-day. You'd no idea who was going to turn up. It could be anybody. Um, tonight, and before I bring our guest on, I'm going to play you a video that we put together of uh, pretty much all of the love that you would normally find on a given day in the Ricochet Book Club for this author. Just have a really quick look at this here. Okay, here we go. Have a look. that Liz found over the space of a little troll about 10 minutes this morning on the way into work. Um, I, we can't applaud, mainly because we don't have the ability to do so, and we'll just be applauding ourselves. But please, can you welcome to uh, Shelf Analysis, Joe Spain. Joe Spain, where are you? Hi, Joe. Hey. <laughs> can you see me? <laughs> your, I can see you. Can you hear me? Are we good? We're, we're all good. We're good. We're good. I have um, everything I need. I have you. I have this. Oh, hang on, wait, I brought, oh, my, you've gotten much posher than I have, because this is the first time I've officially let a drink on it, because virtual. providing you do get chin chin, virtual chin chin and all that. Um, okay. It's okay, the show can wait, we're having a drink. <laughs> it's Bring been a long, three. it's been a long day for both of us. Firstly, tell me about you, you are at home, how are you getting on over the last kind of week or ten days? Yeah, we're at home, we're at home with our four children. Our eldest is 14, our youngest is five. Uh, we have a nine-year-old, an 11-year-old in the middle. They're all homeschooling. So it has been, uh, it's been an interesting few days. Uh, the schools are doing their best. Um, we're struggling with technology. We have two Apple Macs and a PC in this house. And six of us want to use them. And I use mine full-time for work all day. Um, so today we kind of went a bit stir crazy and I made my husband clean the shed. Uh, so we got to skip. And I just kind of abandoned work and cleared out the shed. And I was just telling you before we came on, I discovered a giant spider in our conservatory, which had laid a lot of eggs. <laughs> so I'm kind of sitting here like this, <laughs> waiting for the home invasion of arachnophobia, you know? I, I, I would I would think, firstly, I don't know, maybe people see there's a slight lapse between your picture and your audio, but we can hear you 100% fine. You, you sound great. It's not the best time to find that there is an invasion of spiders in your house when you have to stay in your house, I would have thought. No, no, I, I actually am thinking we should just throw out the house and start again. <laughs> again, also not the best time to be to be yeah. doing that. T tell me about this, okay, because obviously you've got, you know, your actual work to do. You're also in the process of having kids there and you're trying to do something with regards to homeschooling. Tell me about how you are dealing with uh, homeschooling and homeschooling the kids. Do you have schedules? Do you have a lesson? Do you, how, how is that all coming together? Yeah, well, we're kind of... We're taking that thing of being a bit more relaxed. We're not going totally crazy. Like we're not getting them up at exactly the same time every day and getting them, you know, it's, it's not, we're, we haven't gone kind of army-like just because we don't have the mental space for it. So we're kind of getting them up a little bit later, letting them have breakfast and then we're putting them, I'm in the kitchen at the moment, which is now the school room during the day. We're just 
putting them around the kitchen table and they're all following these work plans from school but the two in the middle are really fast so they're kind of like flying through them in an hour and a half going i'm done my school day and we're like uh no <laughs> you're gonna sit there for at least one <laughs> um so then there's no homework so i mean it is a bit easier but uh it's going to get a bit harder now when they have to start talking to their teachers online because we just don't have i mean we're one of those houses that have everything we have all the tabs we've tellies in half the rooms we've you know we do have the three computers but so we're, we're kind of advanced but i don't know how we're going to spread that out with four of them i i think we had too many kids i'm just realizing and, and, that now <laughs> and and then it's okay they're not watching it and then the other the other question i suppose is obviously you know, what work you're trying to get done at the moment as, as a writer where are you are you writing at the moment are you editing what, what are you doing uh, well, I'm in the middle of, I have a, because I do scripts as well as the books. So I have a show that was greenlit to start filming in July. Um, it's being pushed back now to August, but we're facing a lot of difficulty in that industry because everything is being pushed back. So you would hire a cameraman and all of the various technological stuff that you need when they finish one project. And now we're all going to be trying to hire them at the same time. So I'm just concentrating on scripts there at the moment. I have another show where they're accelerating the scripts because actually all the channels in the world now want a hell of a lot of content next year because nobody's producing the, this summer. Um, so I'm doing mostly TV. I have a book ready for next year um, and a book out in the middle of this year. So I've got a bit of breeding space in terms of writing the next book, but that is due at the end of the year. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm drowning in work at the moment. <laughs> And, and as so many other people are who are all sitting at home juggling six, seven things at the moment. I have one question for you before we start going to, because what we've done for everybody, we've asked uh, everybody to attempt to put together three books just that they think people should read right now. There's no criteria. I'm not putting anything in front of people. But in one of your previous lives, you've worked in politics. So you must have some sense in as much as anybody does right now of, of the chaos that must be going on behind the scenes because you've got a lot of people who are dealing with things that none of us ever thought we deal with before do you have any like sense of that given that you used to work in that job well i mean i worked in leinster house when we did that whole period of the troika and the promissory notes and um, one of the things i did notice was there is this kind of civil service that really pulls itself up when it has to perform at a level um and I think at the moment that's what's happening because obviously like we're in that position now as well where you have an election and everything's a little bit crazy. Um, but there, I find like some of the best people in the country are working in this civil service. And I was thinking like, this is crazy at the moment, but actually it just dawned on me doing the homeschooling the other day. I was looking at the Second World War and I was thinking, yeah, it's crazy, but it's <laughs> manageable crazy, hopefully for a few months, you know, we're not going to have six years of this we hope yeah. but i i know from being in leinster house that actually when the proverbial hits the fan th there's a really effective model there to kind of help the country keep taking over you know so i don't feel any worry about that i think we're well set up i can you know i've been in italy and i'm not sure they have the same efficient civil service that we have which may be where some of the or political system which may be where some of the problems are coming for them you know i'm conscious as well that you know the less we talk about the thing, the better. And the people have got three books. Uh, we asked everybody who's become involved in the show to pick three separate books and to come on and uh, pick each of those uh, to tell us what you think they should be reading. So did you have any criteria for this or did you just go bang, 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 here's what I want? I, I kind of picked my favorite books and books that I really, um, that stayed with me, you know? So I picked one from each kind of genre um, I picked one from crime and thriller because I know that I'm con I'm finding it hard to concentrate as much as everybody else, and I either want to be able to pick up a book that I can just pick up and put down and get something from a little chapter each time. Like I was looking at Dave's Dave Rudden's last night, and he was saying that thing maybe little things are better at this moment, mm -hmm. or I want to pick up a book where I'm completely consumed for 300, 400 pages, like where I just want to just I'm in a different place. You know, so for me, that is the kind of thriller genre. Okay. Um, but one of the books I picked, will we go to the books? Yeah, go for it. What have you got? Yeah. Show me where you're going to start. One that I picked, because I, I think we're all feeling this at the moment, the inability to go to the pub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I picked this, McCarthy's um, Bar. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> Sorry. So you picked McCarthy's Bar. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Why? 
So I read this, uh, I think I was on honeymoon when I read this in Vienna, and it just made me want to come home to Ireland and visit every single bar in the west of Ireland. So Pete McCarty, I think he's passed away now, but he had, uh, he was a great travel writer and one of his cardinal rules was you never pass by a pub that's named after you. So I say, Rick, that are you virgin there's, there's, alcoholic? <laughs> there's a few O'Shea's and particularly the main problem is if you end up going to Kerry anywhere, there's a lot of them knocking around and a few in Donegal as well. Yeah, you see, I'm fine. There are no Spain pubs, so I'm, I'm really, I'm a teetotaler. And if they're not in Clare, I'm sure there must be a few Spain pubs in Clare somewhere. I got to stay out of Clare for right. my own sake. <laughs> okay, and, and you came across that where you you were living living abroad. I think just, it was no. it was in my bookshelf, and I just threw it in the suitcase uh, back when there was no such thing as Kindles, and you brought eight to ten books with you when you were going on a two week holiday. Um, and I was reading this, and it is one of these books where he just basically documents his trip around the west of Ireland and all the people he meets. And, I, and he's an English guy, but with, I think a little bit of Irish heritage. So he has that kind of unique inside and outside look. And it is absolutely just, it's just hilarious. Like it's, it's, it's one of those, I've started reading it earlier on and I was laughing as hard as when I read it the first time. Like he's talking about this, um, and, I, and I said, I read this little paragraph fully conscious of all of the issues with industrial schools and magnal laundries. I've done a lot of research, but he makes a bit of fun. And he says, uh, the man across the aisle from me has a menacing aura and a dog collar. He may be a priest, but something about him, the way he seems to threaten violence even while asleep, perhaps, makes me suspect him of being a Christian brother. From the age of 10, I was taught by the Christian brothers the carrot and stick method of education, but without the carrot. My first school report said, Peter is an unpleasant and frivolous boy who talks too much and will never make anything of himself, but he does take a punch well. <laughs> Yeah. And he's just got that kind of really anarchic humor the whole way through, you know. I can't um, possibly so, comment as somebody with a Christian Brothers education. I, I can't weigh into that discussion at all. <laughs> None whatsoever. Okay, like that. And again, that's something that's been recommended to me by loads of people over the years. And I, 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 I've never fallen into it. Okay, that sounds great. I What's think it's one of the books that it made me howl laughing. And and, and that's, that's a tough ask from the written words, you know. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, if, if people want to be cheered up and kind of visit bars in their head. Okay. That's the one. What's your second um, book? The second one I picked then is kind of, I don't, I mean, I don't like wordy books, but sometimes I think a book is one of those books where, so this is The Good Immigrant. Um, I'd, I'd put this on the school syllabus. I really would. Like I, I was, it was given to me when I was researching a show um, and I was kind of reading it just because I had to, but I started reading it and I was absolutely fascinated. I think sometimes you have to put your head into somebody had told me once if you're telling a story the best way to do it is from the point of view of a character so if you start with the guy getting up trying to make breakfast trying to get his kids to school he's stuck in traffic he gets a ticket for parking on a double yellow line you're really with this guy right up to the point where he goes to arrive at his job which is robbing a bank so ever since i know that you've, you put your head in the foot of somebody you can live their life for a day and in the good immigrant it kind of goes through it's a different story i mean um like the comedian nish kamar does a chapter it's a different chapter and it's written by somebody each time there's a woman who's an actress and she says she turns up at every audition and gets offered the role uh, of either terrorist or terrorist wife you know mm. and it just it points out little things to you like you know there's never any chinese characters in eastenders you know at the time of this being written sure that make you really stop and go hang on you know and then they tell you how many people are Chinese living in England so it is a really shocking it just I think it makes you more aware but it's so well written it's not a trial it's not and, like an education and it's obviously this is it's written in sections and it's written by, by, by different individuals show us the cover just that you have there maybe gives a sense of who's written some of the sections um in yeah, it so well. can you see all that <laughs> no the way, yeah, no, there we go that's what we're looking for oh that's great yeah so they're really kind of really well known. You know a lot of their faces or you'd have seen them and things, um, but all actual brilliant writers. And I think you probably know you've been involved in books like this where you have to bring together a lot of writers and try to get them to deliver quality of a consistency. And this book is just, it's just fantastic. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. I, I, I think it's a very tough gig for, for, for anybody. It's a really tough ask. Um, okay, you've got book number three as well you don't actually have a copy of but i do have a copy of the uh, cover here tell us about alex yeah so uh, the psychological psychological well, well how much what happened this champagne have i had <laughs> i think it's it seemed like two sips but it depends on how early you started before the broadcast two sips of this class <laughs> um 
this genre, the psychological thriller, is this kind of exploded. Uh, and I am now one of those, I'm a tough ask as a reader. I get sent these books every single week by every publisher. I, I like yourself, I get them in advance because they want the quotes on the cover. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I've read them all and it takes a lot to make me kind of gasp. And this was one of the first books that it's written, it's a French author. Um, he's written a lot of books. He is just one of those guys who does a twist, but you don't see the twist coming because you're so involved in how he writes the book. Um, with Alex, the, the writing is beautiful. I, I often think the French authors, if they're translated well, this guy's got a fantastic translator, the French write probably better than anybody else. Um, and I was reading this and thinking, oh my God, I want to be this guy when I grow up. I want to write like this, you know? And then I got to the twist in the middle and just, just gasped, just gasped and had to go back to see what had happened. And I am, it takes a lot to impress me with a book of this kind of nature. So this is the one I recommend to everybody saying, I mean, it's a bit violent, it's a bit gritty. There's a woman kidnapped um, at the start and she's in a very difficult position. And if you have a problem with small hairy rodents, don't read this book. Okay, Oops. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which yeah. You, you're obviously fine with, you're, you're, perhaps you're okay with that. Spiders I'm less them, so. Rodents. not spiders. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, and that's Alex by Pierre Lemaitre. Uh, okay, yes. in there as well. Tell me about that as well, because you, you, you do, and, and any of us who are in any way prominent, obviously authors who, who are best selling books, those of us who are in any way connected in, in pushing the book, you do get sent stuff all the time. For you guys, you do get them quite early on, and sometimes you are asked to what is known as blurbing a book. So if you like something sufficiently, you'll read it and go, the best thing since sliced bread, Joe Spain. How, how, how do you, what's your, your, your policy with regards to that? Do you just go, I can only read two or three of those a year if I'm going to get any of my own work done? Do you, how does that work? It's, it's hard. I mean, there's, there's weeks where I would have, I've seen your piles as well, like you'd have 20 come in the door. And I guess from the author's perspective, it's like, I was, I am one of those people. Like my book goes out to authors like everybody else. And I think particularly debuts, when you're more established, there's an awful lot of authors who would know each other. Um, and you would just say, hey, would you, would you read this? And I don't mind if you've got a problem with it, but if you like it, will you give it a bit of a, I mean, for me, when I go to Easton's to buy a book or a Dubray or whatever, I'm, I'm looking at, for the Irish Times, the Times Review, the Guardian Review. The, I'm not necessarily looking for the author's reviews. But having said that, I know as a, on my debut book, Martin Sixsmith uh, had done Philomena and he read my book because even though it was crime, it contained kind of Magdalene Laundries. And it meant so much to me that he gave me that quote. So I always think like when I, when I read as much as I can, and if I like them at all, I, I, I will give them a quote, you know, but it, it's time kind of limits me. But the thing you have to remember as well is that sometimes I'm reading a book and I think that's a really well written book. I don't like it. It's not for me, but I can see it's a really well written book. And I can see that there's people out there who would just go mad for this book. So that's a tough one. And I, I, I'll often give a quote where I just say, like, it's written exceptionally, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Like, it's it's not... For, you know, I'm not going to qualify that. I'm just going to say that's an exceptionally <laughs> written book. And the people who read that genre are going to go buy that book. Sure. So I try to be very nice. I, I'm, going to, I'm having a look at there. Are tons of uh, comments coming in. We get to see some of them uh, here uh, as we can. Um, there is a huge uh, amount of uh, love for you going on here, as per usual, in the book club. Um, I bought all of Joe's books. I really look forward to starting them. Uh, just bought her first book after some recommendations on here the other day. Wow, Joe Spain in my living room. I should clean the place. <laughs> I like that. Can you make my husband clean our shed? Is your husband, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, social distancing being part of it. Is he, is he available for work at the moment if he can come in someone's shed? Yeah, I have magical powers. If you show me money, I can make him do stuff. <laughs> 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 um, I bought my, my mum her first Joe Spain book, Six Wicked Reasons. She finished it last week and loved it. Uh, have any of your books been serialized for TV? I mean, obviously, you're working on something yourself at the moment. Um, I'm in that weird position where sometimes the awful thing with tv and i could see that with dave as well last night is sometimes something's um commissioned by producers but it hasn't yet been greenlit by a channel mm -hmm. and and sometimes even when it is greenlit you're still not allowed to say that this is going to be on air because they don't want something coming out at the same time they don't want any competition um a couple of my books are destined for screen and i am adapting them when i i, I genuinely don't know like at this stage I, I, I probably was in a position to say 18 months to two years last month, and now I don't know when, but they will come to screen. 
I, I love everybody who's getting involved on the, on, on the side as well. And the people are going, oh, I missed the first one. What was Joe's recommendation? P people are already going, here's what it is. You can find it here. So people are filling other people in in the comments. So go and have a look down there. And um, for everybody as well who is, is, is watching this, you've missed the beginning part. All of these are archived. You'll be able to see the whole thing uh, later on. And all of these shows that we do, they'll be available in perpetuity until people get really bored with them and then they disappear away down in, in the book club. Um, Joe, thanks a million for, for letting us into the house tonight, which I know it's the weirdest of situations for us all to be in. Normally, you and I would be sitting in a studio doing this or we'd be sitting in front of an audience at a festival doing this, and hopefully we will do that again at some point in the future. And I know you and I both will either separately or together, but um, to have um, you just say yes immediately. You were you were one of the first things that inspired this show, primarily because you were the one who said, myself and my husband, uh, the book club is one of the few things that's keeping us sane at the moment because it keeps us completely away from news and current affairs. And I went, we should do something about that. And so you've been partially the inspiration for this series as well. Um, and listen, thanks so many for coming on the show tonight. Excellent. And when you're done there, as I was showing you earlier on the drink shelf, you can just come over. <laughs> it's, it's. It, I will take you up on that when it is socially acceptable to do so. I guarantee it. Joe, thank yeah. you so much for being on the show tonight. Cheers. Thanks a million. Thanks so much. Bye bye. And that's Joe Spain. Joe Spain is in her house. I kid you not. And um, Joe Spain uh, live on uh, the show today. How do I press that button to make this happen? I do. They go, and I can switch off her noise now. I don't mean noise. I mean so that we don't listen to what goes on in Joe's house after she's gone. Um. That's pretty much it for the show for tonight. There will be another one tomorrow night here at 8 p.m. in the Ricochet Book Club. Again, I won't tell you who the author is beforehand, but God, we've got weeks worth of the most incredible authors that you know so well in Ireland and outside of the country as well that we're going to be talking to um, over the next few weeks. No, I'm not going to give you a different part of my house every night. That's going to be strange. There's not enough space, frankly. Um, so thanks to everybody who uh, got in contact uh, and everybody who, uh, if you want to drop some comments on the site as well, um, we'll see what we can figure out in terms of um, getting them responded to a little bit later on as well. Thanks to everybody who's been um, dropping. Again, I can't make it through to all the comments because there's so much stuff going on here. Thanks uh, for the mental health break, Rick. Absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks to everybody who's enjoying it at the moment. If you like this uh, and you'd like a break from uh, uh, everything else that's going on in the world, don't forget you can catch me on RTE Gold uh, every weekday from 10 a.m. The RTE Gold schedule is now four shows every day, so it's Will Leahy from 7 and myself from 10 a.m. Uh, Keith Walsh from 1, Michael Cahill from 4. You'll find all the details. Just Google RTE Gold. You'll find out um, where we are and all the details there. Uh, and we'll be back with another shelf analysis same time tomorrow night. Until then, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow on Twitter and on Instagram, and we'll see you here tomorrow night as well. And once again, thanks a million for getting involved, and thanks a million for switching on tonight. Cheers. See you tomorrow.